This is the Fio R7. It's a streamer with a touchscreen. It's a headphone amp and it's a fully functioning DAC. This thing is jam packed with features and I kind of love it. And it kind of frustrates the heck out of me too. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about why the Fio R7 is simultaneously one of the coolest hi-fi products I've ever listened to and one of the most frustrating. We have a lot to cover in this video. I gotta pull up my sleeves. Because there are so many features on the Fio R7, you could take up an entire video just talking about them. But there are a lot of great videos out there. Videos from people like John Darko. Videos from people like Joshua Valor. Videos from people like Passion for Sound that go over the functionality way better than I ever could. Because let's face it, my audience, me, I'm 47, my audience is, well, it skews a little bit older. So this newfangled technology is gonna confuse many of us. But I was still able to figure out most of it. Let's talk about what's on the back. On the back. All right, let's go top to bottom. At the top, you have an SD card slot. It's for a mini SD, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it is what it is. What you can do is put your music on an SD card and plug it in. Then you use an app, the Fio Music app, to get all of your music off of there. Then underneath that, you have a USB input. To the right of that, it's a Bluetooth antenna, I believe, or maybe the Wi-Fi antenna. It's some type of antenna for wireless transmission of signal or something like that. To the left of that, you have two line outs. Underneath that, you have a balanced out. Underneath the USB-C, you have a USB host, which is basically a USB out. Underneath that, optical in. Underneath that, optical out. To the right of that, coaxial in, coaxial out. All the way down, you have a hardwired ethernet going to the right. There's an AC-DC, AC-DC power switch. I giggle every time I hear ACDC. So you can hook up a linear power supply or any type of 12 volt power supply. Looks like they want 12 volts, three amps, which is 36 watts. Anyway, you can plug that right into here. Then you have IEC connector main power switch. On the front, you have volume and power knobs up here at the top. Whoops. And then down here, you have a selector switch. So you can go headphone amp, preamp going at the same time, headphone amp, then preamp, and then you can go line output only. Headphone amps, you have balanced right here. Underneath that, you have a 4.4 pentagram, pentacon. Just kidding. That joke never gets old. And then under here, you have a 6.35 millimeter single ended headphone jack. Instead of going through an uncomfortably long how it works section in this video, I will direct you to those other videos that do a much better job of explaining it. I'm just going to talk about what I like and what I don't like. And we're going to do the compliment sandwich where we talk about something good, maybe something that the Fio R7 can work on, and then something good again, and then something bad. Number one, numero uno. What I like. The headphone amp in here is super clean. What I don't like, the headphone amp in here is super clean. Actually, it's a little bit too clean. It's not as dynamic as I would like. And there is some sibilance or a lot of sibilance on various headphones that I listen to. I tried out the Paras from Moondrop. Moondrop Paras, which I just did a review on. Very good headphone. A Little bit light on the bottom end. And then I also listened to these Fios, I can't remember the model number, but these are 350 ohm headphone. That's the highest impedance headphones I've ever listened to, okay? Anyway, to me, personally, from my listening, I don't love THX headphone amps. I feel like they're kind of dry. Also don't feel like they have the biggest soundstage available. Now, I'm not saying it's terrible. I'm just saying there was sibilance there. It wasn't super dynamic and it was a little dry through the mid-range. When I say dry, I just mean not lifeless, but less full of life than other headphone amplifiers, specifically the Gishelli Labs Oracle 3 Pro, which is the headphone amp that I compared to this Fio R7. 
The second thing that I love and don't like about this headphone amplifier slash streamer slash DAC is the touchscreen. It's super cool. It's super fun to interact with. What I don't like is the touchscreen. It's super confusing. It's super difficult to find exactly what you're looking for quickly. Now, this is basically an Android phone stuck in here with an amplifier, with a DAC. So the phone, the Google phone is the streamer itself. I'm an Apple guy. So I'm used to using an Apple phone. So there's going to be a learning curve associated with this device if you get it and you are an Apple user. I was able to figure it out towards the end and I spent a good amount of time on this thing. You can swipe down from the top, you can use the little center buttons. There's three buttons here, beep, beep, and beep. But you can't think about this as just a streamer with a limited interface. This is a Google phone with fundamentally an unlimited interface. So for me, being an old guy, it got a little confusing at times. But I will say the act of interacting with this display was very cool when I finally figured it out. And we'll get to that at the end, so stay with me. Number three, the good. It basically has unlimited inputs. So with the exception of an analog input, you can do optical, coaxial. You can plug in a external hard drive. You can plug in a computer. You can plug in an SD card. So fundamentally, from a digital music perspective, this has you completely covered. What I don't like, the headphone amp seems like it's underpowered, which it shouldn't be, because on paper, there should be 3.7 watts available, I believe at 32 ohms, on ultra high gain. There's a bunch of different gain settings. You have, I don't know, I think it's low, medium, high, higher, and then ultra high. Anyway, I think there's four or five different headphone gains. I had to put this on the highest gain. I get it for these headphones because they're 350 ohms, 350. The Paras aren't as hard to drive, but I was still on the highest gain and I was still going to about 75% of the volume span, which is another cool thing. When you use this to turn up the volume, it pops up a digital display or graphical display, and then you can go up and down with the volume. Super cool. The other cool thing about this device is since it's an Android phone, it runs all the apps natively. So I was able to use Apple Music for the first time on a streamer. Actually signed up for Apple Music, got three months free because I bought a new iPhone. I got to play around with Apple Music again. I used to be an Apple Music user before I started the channel. With the Fio R7, I was able to download Amazon Music app. I was able to download Apple Music. I didn't download Tidal simply because it has Rune or it's Rune ready. So I listened to Tidal through the Rune app on my phone as the remote control and the Rune app on here, which is basically the Rune endpoint. And we'll get to that later too. Having the native apps in here is pretty cool because then you're not going through a third party app like the Weem. Even though the Weem app is very good, there's something cool about being able to interact with the native app. Using that as a segue though, there is not a good way to control EQ or different sonic settings like bass, mid-range, treble. On an Android phone, when I used to have one, there was a way, there's a built-in EQ. However, if you are using the Android to play your music on an older phone, it gets resampled, which gets rid of bit-perfect music. I don't know if that's important to you, but for whatever reason back then, that was important to me. With Rune, I was able to put an EQ curve onto the R7 when I was using the Rune app for different headphones. And I felt like I needed it because not only was there sibilance, but it also lacked some oomph on the bottom. So I put in a little bass, brought down four to 6K a little bit to try to get rid of that sibilance. Sibilance. And I was able to, but you have to have Rune and you have to know how to do DSP settings on Rune. And when you do a DSP setting on Rune, not really bit perfect anymore. You have to make some headroom in there and everything. So not the easiest thing on the planet. Other thing I didn't really love is airplay. I was able to get airplay 
to work on here, but when I was airplaying from my iPhone to the R7, I couldn't get the album display art to display, which is one of the only reasons why I would be buying something like this. On the EverSolo DMP A6, when I airplayed it, no problem, album display popped up. It was great. I know it sounds like I'm really picking on this thing, but hang with me. What are my final thoughts? Ooh, final thoughts. You know, when I do a pro con list like I did today, what I like, what I don't like, you wouldn't think that I'd ever recommend this device when I have this many criticisms about this device. And I have some more. So this is kind of the de facto way that you can put the device. You can also put it like this for whatever reason. Then you can have the FIO upside down. But you can't put it like this. And putting it like this is the use case scenario that I think most of my audience would listen to because my audience is interested in headphones, but not nearly as interested in headphones or headphone related equipment as they are in two channel related equipment or home theater. So having it like this next to your hi-fi stacks, not going to really look perfect. And this is quite beautiful. This is a really well-designed, modern-looking product. There's really no way to use this thing remotely outside of the Rune app. So if you're not a Rune user, you're going to have to continually go up to this thing and poke it and prod it if you have it in any other installation other than a desktop installation. And I would argue if you're using it in a desktop situation, you could be using your computer as a streamer, or you could be using the Eversolo DMP A6, which I'm pretty sure comes with a remote control. I did a review on that. I can't remember if it comes with a remote control. I think it does come with a remote control. But coming full circle, a piece of equipment that plays music for me is a phenomenal piece of equipment if A, you want to use it, and B, you forget how long you've been using it because you've been enjoying the experience so much. And I did have that experience with the FIO R7. As a headphone amplifier, I have a little area in my living room where I listen to headphones. And even though I didn't love the way the headphone amp sounded, I still ended up using this thing for hours and hours and hours. I had such a great time with it, even though it was frustrating, even though I couldn't really control it remotely, except if I was using Rune, and I am a Rune user, so that was pretty much the only use case scenario that I could see myself using this. But at $700, it's a lot. It's not a lot if you peel it back and if you would utilize the DAC inside, if you would utilize the headphone amp inside, and if you would utilize the streamer inside. At that point, you're only paying $200 per piece of equipment, 200 for the DAC, 200 for the headphone amp, 200 for the streamer. And in that case, I think it's a deal. Even the streamer itself, I think, is kind of worth the price of admission with the DAC. That's good. It's not going to beat something like the Gishelli Labs J2, aka M4499, even with its stock Texas Instruments op amps. You put in the Sparkos op amps, then it's way, way, way better. So depending upon your use case scenario, I think the price is actually very fair, if not a big value. The problem is... The Gishelli Labs Arcle 3 Pro headphone amplifier sounds way better. The J2 DAC sounds way better. Now, if you buy both of those, you're actually above the price of this. I didn't really test any other headphone amps or DACs compared to it, but you could probably get something that sounds better for less money. But when you add in a streamer, you're not going to be able to get anything better, especially a streamer with a screen because the Eversolo DMP A6 comes in, I think, around $850. While the R7 is far from perfect and probably won't fit the use case scenario of the majority of my viewers, I still think it's a bargain and I still enjoyed using it for the most part when I finally figured out the Google interface and all that stuff. But... I don't think this product's gonna age well. How many people have cell phones that are five or even 10 years old? It's hard enough to think about using a DAC for a long period of time because DAC technology changes. New DAC chips come out all the time. New features come out all the time. So I think someone needs to consider the shelf life of the FIO R7 before they run out and buy it. I personally have no problem buying a new cell phone every couple of years. 
But if you're shelling out $600, $700 for a streamer, headphone amp, and DAC inside, I think one needs to consider just how long they think they're going to be able to use this product because it might not be as long as you think you will, where if you would buy separate, separate headphone amp, separate DAC, separate streamer, then you could at least hold on to the headphone amp or the preamp, especially if it's analog only. You could hold on to the DAC for quite a while, and then you could change out the streamer when you need to. But there are no affordable streamers with screens. Frankly, this is probably the most affordable streamer with a screen outside of something that is using a Raspberry Pi as the engine inside the streamer. There's a lot of reasons not to like this product. There are a few reasons to like this product. And personally for me, when I interacted with it, that was when the magic happened. So Fio R7 is not gonna be right for everybody, but the Fio R7 is gonna be really right for some people. And I cannot help but recommend it in a little headphone nook somewhere, or this at work or something like that. It's a cool product. Frustrating at times, but cool. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Patreon only Zooms. Patreon only Discord group. Patreon only Facebook group. You can use the links in the description to buy this product. That's an affiliate link. I got this from Apos. Apos Audio. Thank you, Apos. You can also buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Click on it. Throw a couple of dollars my way, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can buy a coffee mug. You can use the other links in the description. Those are affiliate links. You can sign up for Amazon Music. Title or Rune to use with the Fio R7. Links in the description. Click sign up. Even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge watch your album art on the Fio R7 and binge listen and fill yourself with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.